So in part three, you very well may need to know how you do many of these special procedures, CSI, TSE, TBI. And so today let's talk about total skin electrons. So describe a TSE treatment, including the setup and delivery. What areas are typically treated and shielded? How would you commission it? How do you determine the angle of the gantry? And what considerations need to be made when establishing a program like this? So a TSE treatment. So we are going to use typically two to nine MeV electrons. You want one CM depth of dose, but you don't want to go into the bone marrow. Ideally, you are going to use a gantry angle. And this, I will say, is going to be dependent on your room, your setup, but anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees is pretty normal. And so what that does is allow you to avoid Bremster lung x-ray contamination. So think <clears throat> you are going to have the photons, just Bremster lung photons coming out of the treatment head. So if they were directly in front, they're all going to be going toward here and hitting the patient. However, if you have them angled, maybe some of them that are scattered like over here may hit, but a lot of them are angled outside the patient. And so they're going to be missed or they're going to miss the patient. Also with that change in beam angle, you are going to get a uniform beam on the patient and that's going to provide a homogeneous dose. So you want to use a six fields. And that is going to be an AP, a PA, a RAO, an LAO, an RPO, and a LPO. So definitely know those. You want to treat the, we'll put uh, D1 on AP, the RPO, and the LPO. 1D. So on the first day, you're going to treat the AP, RPO, and LPO. And then day two, you're going to treat the other beams. So patient uh, right here, I would say, you know, we're talking about what's oh, actually mentioned right here. This says 350. I'm used to somewhere around uh, 400 centimeters, four meters. But again, that's going to be dependent on your personal setup. You could also put, uh, they call it a beam spoiler, you're going to have a 1cm acrylic plate in front of the patient. And ideally, what we want is we want that 1cm depth and you want a 10% uniformity right there. So for these treatments, oftentimes we are treating mycosis fungoises, we're treating lymphomas, and that's why certainly we don't want that bone marrow to that tolerance to be exceeded. The so we talked about angle, and then a typical prescription is 36 gray, and that is going to be in two, two, oh, we'll put 200 centigray in or times 18 fractions and two fractions per week. So now the little bit more you can have the patient's arms up on a turntable similar to this, and it's going to actually turn the patient and it'll rotate the patient. You could also have like a translational table, or you can use what I mentioned right here, which I've almost always used is the Stanford technique where you use these three positions and you alterate them every, you know, every day. But if you can have this, rotating table, you necessarily you don't necessarily need to do that. So now let's see a shield and sh let's talk about what's treated and shielded here. So you want a boost to the uh, soles of the feet. You want the palms of, of the hands. You want a scalp and the perineum. So think about if you want to treat everything on their body, you want to treat all their skin. Well, if they are laying here or standing, whatever it may be, what parts of the body aren't going to be treated? Well, obviously, the top of their scalp isn't going to be. Depending on the treatment you do, the palms of their hands may not be. The soles of the feet definitely aren't going to be. The perineum won't be. So you do want to boost those. Typically, you just do so with a block 
and a different lead. Well, we'll talk about shielding now. So for the shielding, you want to use extra shielding for the eyes, the nails, and the top of the scalp because those are most likely to show some type of biological effect and negative effect due to the radiation. So I think normally, according to papers, you when you use that acrylic or plexiglass degrader, you can get a plus or minus 4% horizontally in terms of dose uniformity, and then plus or minus 8% vertically due to or for dose uniformity, which is pretty good. You also ideally, when you move this gantry, you're going to get less than 4% of x-ray contamination. Another thing is when you're establishing a program like that, you want to actually use TLDs or diodes on the patient, and that will give you a better idea of what dose are they getting. It verifies your setup, and it actually just gives you something to document and a peace of mind knowing that each fraction they're getting approximately 200 degrees to their skin. So the, well, actually one thing I did mention, look, I broke my own roll. I'm sorry, guys, TG30. Man, I can't believe I didn't mention it. When there is a task group, you always mention it. I failed to do it, so I failed for this question. TG30, that is the task group for total skin electrons. So now if we want to talk about commissioning, so how would you determine the angle of the gantry? Say you don't have a TSC program, but they want you to have one. So one, you, you need TLDs for in vivo dosimetry. You need rando phantoms to actually test. And then you need your exact treatment parameters. So how much room do, is there between the gantry and the patient? And something you would do is TG30 highlights this, is you could put a board right where the patient would be and you can put it at the treatment distance exactly like what you plan on doing for the patient. And you could shoot one beam at an angle of 10 to 15 degrees. And then you could take an optical density profile and change the, the gantry angle until you don't see any more, any variation greater than 10%. So you would put film on that board, you would keep changing these gantry angles and then assessing those films until you see that, okay, we have our, our uniformity within 10%. Then that is certainly something you need to consider when establishing a program. So not only the gantry angle, the room, have all the necessary equipment. So do you have the sized room? Do you have the staffing uh, that takes therapists physicists, physicians to do this. You also have to decide, do you want a rotating base or do you want to use a modified Stanford technique? Do you have the equipment? And then another important thing is think about the extra radiation hitting the wall that is behind the patient. Do you have adequate shielding to prepare for that extra workload? So you would need to go in and do shielding calcs, really increase that use factor and see if that shielding is adequate enough. So that's TSC in a nutshell. There is a lot that goes into TSC, but I think it's very important that you know how to do this. I think it's something that they very well could ask you. So know all of the inner workings, know how you commission it, know how it works, know why we use it, how we use it, and then you will be prepared for anything they throw at you for TSE-wise. So if you have any questions, comment below. Happy studying, and thank you for watching.